this is the one. This is a book that anyone in their 20s should read. This book comes a bit too close for comfort. And that's when you're going to cry when you read this book. This book is a slap in the face, a punch in the gut, a bit of fun. That's it, Space MacGyver, what more do you want? And then Wallace dies. And in the end, my reasons are quite petty. And I like it when my books talk back to me. This book, this book, but oh boy, does the end of this book deliver. The best book I read in 2023 is... It is that time of the year. That time to take stock of the books that made me cry, the books that made me laugh, the books that made me feel things and ended up living somewhere rent-free in my head this year. And I will say this was far more difficult than I would have ever expected. 2023 was an excellent year. So after a lot of grunting, hard work and literary soul pain, this is my top 10 of the best books that I read in 2023. Now, of course, I will not be reviewing all of these books in length because then this video would be over an hour long. Instead, I will be linking all of the books I talk about down below in the description box so you can do your own research. Coming in at number 10, we have our first and only graphic novel. It calls itself an affectionate parody and it is a sassy bit of satire. I'm talking about The Woman, The Mink, The Cot and The Donkey by Marjorie Swash. Now when I saw this book at the bookstore, I thought it was the sequel of the well-loved The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. But this is not a book by Charles Mackesy, no, it is an affectionate parody. It is a satire. It heckles the big news stories of the last few years. It marks the Covid lockdowns, mass media and of course the donkey which is very loud, has a certain hairdo and swears to make everything great again, is the star of the show. It mimics the thought-provoking style of the original one, but with a little tongue-in-cheek. It's ever so well done, it fooled me and it comes in fresh at number 10. The Woman, the Mink, the Cut and the Donkey by Marjorie Swash. At number 9 we have possibly one of the biggest debuts of the year. It takes historical fiction and sprinkles it with a little bit of fantasy magic. I'm talking about Wayward by Amelia Hart. Now Wayward brings us a story in three different POVs, three different women in three different time areas. From the Middle Ages up to Victorian England up to nowadays countryside. Three women that seem very different at first glance but as the story unfolds seem to be sharing not just blood but also strange wayward powers. Wayward because witch is a word that is invented by men. Wayward is a book that is unique, it is original, it is refreshing, it has good storytelling and interesting characters. Feminist historical fiction with a little bit of magic woven through. Wayward by Amelia Hart. The next entry at number 8 was a book that was selected by almost every celebrity book club and radio book club out there. A New York Times bestseller, Jimmy Fallon praised it, it was on BBC Radio 2. You could not have missed this one. It is a slow-paced, character-driven book about life and you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy it, but it certainly helps. Yes, I'm talking about Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zeffin. This book follows several characters throughout their lives, again from several point of views. People that might be from very different backgrounds, very different cultural upbringings, but are connected through their love of games and friendship. The lives of Sadie and Sam are far from perfect, so they decide to build perfect worlds in their video games. And while these perfect worlds might bring them success, that doesn't necessarily mean it brings them happiness. If there was ever a book about the human condition, this is it. This is the one. So if you don't need a fast-paced story and a lot of plot and you love characters that you hate to love and love to hate, then this is the book for you. At number 7 we have our first and only non-fiction book. And the subtitle says it all. Stories of soil, sisterhood and survival. 
In Why Women Grow, author Alice Vincent tries to investigate why women are drawn to the soil. What is it that makes women put their hands into the soil and grow and nurture things? It is a series of interviews and thoughts and meditations of women of all walks of life. All with their own unique, emotional and sometimes very dramatic stories. From wanting to produce vegetables and fresh food for one's family to gardening as a form of therapy after a stillbirth and traumatic disorder. This book hits hard at times. But it also provides a beautiful message of hope and renewal. These are real stories that grip you by the throat and I absolutely loved it. So forget all of the celebrity biographies you saw this year. If you want to read about real people, then this is the book for you. At number 7, Why Women Grow by Alice Vincent. And at number 6, just shy of our top 5, we have a classic. And if anyone says that classics are no longer significant for our modern times, then they have not read this book. In this actual series of letters, author and poet Rainer Maria Rilke wrote to a young friend, he gives advice on all matters that have to do with becoming your own person. The letters themselves are profound, thought-provoking and lyrical. They advise our young poet on things like relationships, sex, marriage, writing itself and even on advice and how to heed it. It talks about suffering and how to overcome it. This is a book that anyone in their 20s should read. This is a book that anyone in their 40s should read. All manners of advice and thoughts and musings are condensed in such a way in just 64 pages that this book becomes a rough diamond. Let us do a young poet by Rainer Maria Rilke in our sixth spot. Entering our top five and it pains me to see this book in just fifth place because it is such a beautiful book and that says a lot about the books that are yet to come. I'm talking about As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Khatun. It is said to be a love letter to Syria and its people. A speculative novel set amidst the Syrian revolution and civil war. But it could have been set in any war-torn region that we see in current affairs. This book comes a bit too close for comfort. This is a story about a young girl, Salama, who is torn between her conviction and her loyalty to her country, Syria, and her urge to survive. She suffers through war trauma every day. Bombings, snipers, the flood of wounded coming into the hospital where she works, and not knowing whether her family and her loved ones will be surviving the next few hours. And as a way to cope, a way to survive, her fears and her traumas have manifested as a physical embodiment. An imaginary friend called Kof, being a bit of the devil on her shoulder, giving her the advice to run, to flee her country. Yes, she wants to flee the country until she meets a young man who is convinced they have a duty to stay and help liberate their country. She's desperate, but in the end, Salama will have to choose for herself. And that's when you're going to cry when you read this book. This book is a slap in the face, a punch in the gut. Do read your trigger warnings because it hits and it hits hard. But it is also ever so beautiful. It is by far one of the best YA novels I have ever read in my life and I would recommend it to anyone who wants to listen. At number 5, and I might even rank it higher when I reread it in the future, As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. At number 4, it is time for a bit of a lighter read, a bit of fun. This book was called one of the best books of the years by Bill Gates and honestly, who am I to disagree? I don't typically read much science fiction, but this book might have seduced me to read more of the genre. This is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I'm not going to tell you what the book is about because that would almost immediately take us into spoiler territory. Enough to say that you might know Andy Weir from The Martian, either the book or the movie. And he does this excellent thing that I want from sci-fi. It takes science as we know it today and makes it do things that are still impossible. And I believe it. This book is not about Star Wars, Star Trek, 
Warp Speed, Chevron 4 or put your phasers on stun. No, this is about real world, real earth science and what it might do in the future. It is believable. It is one of those stories that sucks you in and takes you on for a ride all the way up to the end. The best review I've seen explain this book is the one that compares our main character to some sort of a Space MacGyver. And that's it, Space MacGyver. What more do you want? Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir at number 4. And then we enter our top 3, the 3 best books, according to me, that I read this year. And at number 3 we find an actual cozy read. I think this book is the one that I recommended to people the most this year. It is cozy, it is queer, it is emotional, it is funny, it has great characters and it has magical realism. What more do you want? I'm talking about Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klum. We meet Wallace. Wallace is a bit of a Scrooge type corporate bastard. With a failing relationship, no friends and employees that absolutely loathe him, Wallace doesn't have much to show for except his business empire. And then Wallace dies. At first Wallace is outraged. Angry because not a lot of people have actually attended his funeral. Then up in arms because he has to stay in this kind of in-between purgatory-like cozy tea shop. And for the first time in his life Wallace has been given time. Time to think about his life and experience it, as it were, before he goes up into the whispering door high in the sky. And in doing so, Wallace finds in afterlife all of the things he lost in his actual life. It is a book about found family, about friendship, about love, about enjoying life, embracing it. It is a cozy fantasy that feels like a warm hug, a fresh cone and an excellent cup of tea. It was my first TJ Kloon book and I must say, I'm convinced. Yes, I will be reading far more by TJ Kloon in the next year, starting with that other big title, The House in the Cerulean Sea. Give me excellent stories, interesting characters, a fun family trope and make it cozy and you'll end up in my top 3 of the year. At number 3, Under the Whispering Door by TJ Kloon. And then I eat a snack. Because honestly, it was ever so hard to decide which book deserved that first place and which book would end up in that cursed second spot. And in the end, my reasons are quite petty. The only reason why this book ended up in the second spot is because I hated its main character. And that's the whole point of this book. I'm talking of course of Yellowface by Rebecca F. Kwong. This book has convinced me that she is one of the best writers we have today. Yes, it is her first foray into literary fiction and it feels like she's been doing it for years now. It is razor sharp satire, it is incendiary and it even heckles you as a reader and me as a YouTuber. And I like it when my books talk back to me. This book is a slap in the face, a slap in the face we need it. This book talks about racism, about cultural appropriation, about the world we still live in today. It talks about consumerism, about the influence of social media. And perhaps most important of all, this book talks about the love you and I share. And that's books. It is an x-ray of everything that is wrong with the publishing industry and we as readers today. And yes, I hated the main character. I hated June or even worse, Juniper's song as she calls herself. And luckily I did, because if you don't hate the main character, then you need to take a long, hard look at yourself. Yellowface is the kind of book that will kick your conscience. And that's the exact reason why some people might not even like it. But I loved it. Possibly the best book that was published this year, and by far one of the best I read this year. At number two, just because I hated June, Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwang. And then, the moment we've all been waiting for, the best book I read in 2023 is, drumroll please, Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This book, this book. If you have not read this book, just, you know, 
quit this video, go out and buy it. Although it is very strange and surreal at first, this book is impossible to put down. This book is a marvel. It is the enigmatic story of the even more mysterious main character Piranesi, who lives in a strange house. A house full of Roman, Grecian columns and statues, where he is most of the time alone. A house that is flooded with strange birds in it. And then there's the other, the only person he has contact with. Up to that fateful day that Piranesi notices others have been entering the house. This book is not what you expect from it. It starts off as a fantasy and becomes something entirely different. I can't go into detail about what it is or what happens because this book is a book that I would compare to the movie The Sixth Sense. You can get surprised only once. But oh boy, does the end of this book deliver. But it is not just a clever ending. This book has layers upon layers upon layers of intertextuality. The more books you have read, the more things you will recognize. And the more things you will recognize, the more doubts will you have about the things that you might have missed. This book is a masterpiece. And I don't say that lightly. If there is one book that you pick up from this list, from this top 10, then let it be this one. As is apparent, I'm a huge fan. This book blew me away. Piranesi by Susanna Clark, my best book of 2023. Go out and buy it. And that's it for me for today. My top 10 of best books I read in 2023. And now I want to hear from you. Let me know down below in the comments what your best book of this year was. And do you agree or disagree? Let me know down below in the comments. I will talk books some more. In the meantime, if you want to support this video, but you don't know what commenting, why not comment a book emoji? Because this is all about the best books of the year. That's it for me for this week. Thank you for watching. Do give us a like, do subscribe, do leave a comment, because those things matter to support the channel. In the meantime, if you need some more excellent bookish recommendations, you can always go here.